as one who serves. The 50-year jubilee of Auxiliary Bishop Thomas Costello. How do you capture 50 years of service in a short video? One minute at a time, the way Bishop Costello lives his life. He was born in Camden, New York, the only son of James and Ethel Costello. He was an altar boy at St. Peter's Church in Rome and attended St. Aloysius Academy where he played basketball. He's number 10 in this photograph. So I went to Camden Central High School and he went to St. Aloysius Academy in Rome and we played basketball each other. And I remember going down to Rome and we were undefeated and we lost to St. Aloysius. And then we had a return visit and we had lost again. And then Monsignor Fran Willenberg, who wasn't a Monsignor then, just a simple little student, and he shot a long basket that killed us. My attraction to priesthood uh, was born in my high school days, basically, I think. Uh, I attended a very small Catholic high school and we were a very closely knit group of people. We did everything together. Father Jack Burke, Father John Burke was one of our associates and uh, he was a new, relatively newly ordained priest, two or three years ordained and uh, was just kind of an ideal model and uh, a lot of us wanted to be like him. There were four of us ordained in 1954 from our parish. When we were home for Easter, uh, Father Burke said, when are you going to apply for the seminary? And I said, when are, you, when are you going to give me the papers? And that's how it happened. But I didn't share the good news with my parents until mid-August. Uh, my father was a sentimental Irishman, and that transmits to the, the progeny as well. Uh, he didn't say much. He just kind of listened. My mother was very affirmative. And finally my dad said, well, if that's what you want to do, be a good one. And that was his blessing. So they drove me off to St. Bernard's the next month. Bishop Ford called me to the priesthood on the 5th of June, 1954. My name was announced. That's the official way it happens. You're not really called until the church calls you. And so Thomas Costello became Reverend Thomas Costello and celebrated his first Mass on June 6th. We didn't get the envelope uh, on Ordination Day then, as, as happens now. We had to come back in two weeks to find out where we were going. And uh, I was assigned to the south side of Syracuse to uh, Our Lady of Lourdes. Monsignor Marty Watley was the pastor there. He had a great reputation and he proved to be a, just a marvelous first pastor. I have a thesis that there is something of our first pastor in, in each one of us. And I've still got some of the Watts mannerisms, I'm sure. I was there from 54 to 59 at Lourdes, and uh, they were some of the best years of, of priesthood. There came to be four of us in the rectory, uh, but we had great times together. The, the community life was just super, and the people were awesome. He used to go over every morning to help this lady who couldn't get out of bed. And I asked him in a gentle way, which is not really my way, but anyway, I asked him, where do you go every morning? And he said, I help some lady that can't get out of bed. And I said, well, if you don't want to tell me, that's all right. It was Monsignor Watley who taught me how to be a priest. And his lessons were confirmed by a man with whom I lived, who is a living legend. Uh, Monsignor Charlie Brady was just awesome. Uh, those watching this know his story. Father Brady was committed to people, uh, to people with needs, to people who didn't have the advantages that some of us had. Uh, and just living with him, he taught the whole community. This was at 672 West Onondaga Street, what some people called Robber's Roost. Uh, he taught all of us who lived in that community what it means to be concerned uh, about issues, about public policy issues, about justice issues, about peace issues. Uh, just by his being, we absorb so much. And uh, so for any fire in my belly, uh, he lit it. Many years after being influenced by Monsignor Brady, Catholic Charities awarded Bishop Costello the coveted Brady Award, giving
given to the person who truly exemplifies the spirit of Monsignor Braden. Father Costello served as superintendent of schools in the diocese from 1960 to 1975, when school enrollment was at an all-time high. More schools were built to make room for the baby boomers. In 1965, Father Costello became Monsignor Costello. His parents were by his side. Monsignor Costello returned to Our Lady of Lords in 1975 as its pastor and remained there until he was ordained Auxiliary Bishop of the Diocese of Syracuse in 1978. After the Vatican Council, Monsignor Costello was caught up in the swell of ecumenism. He was instrumental in establishing what is now known as the Interreligious Council of Central New York and the Diocesan Office of Black Catholic Ministry. We asked Bishop Costello when he learned he was to be named Auxiliary Bishop. It happened on Christmas Day. Uh, now this would have been 1977. Uh, Christmas happened to be a Sunday that year. And for four weeks, we announced that we would not have a 1230 Mass as we usually had on Sunday. I was back at Lloyd's as pastor by now. And even though we announced it, I was very sensitive. I didn't want anybody to miss Mass on Christmas. So I hung around church until 1235, and praise God, nobody showed up. So I locked up and started for the rectory and noticed a car parked in front of the rectory, which I recognized. It was Bishop Harrison's car. When I went up into the common room, my, some of my associates were still there, and uh, he was talking with them, and they were talking about nothing. And the conversation went on like it was on a tape about nothing. Same old topics. He talked about Notre Dame, and he talked about St. Lucy's. He talked about the things that he always talked about. And finally, uh, one of the associates said, well, my mom's expecting me for Christmas dinner, Bishop. Uh, may I excuse myself? And the others got the the message rather quickly, and uh, when they finally had gone, he said, are we alone? And I said, I certainly hope so. And he reached into his pocket and extracted a letter that said the Holy Father has in mind to uh, appoint you exactly to the Bishop of the Diocese of Syracuse. Uh, here's a code uh, that you may use in, in responding. If it's affirmative, use this code, and if it's negative, use this code. And uh, Bishop Harris said, no, I, you know, I'm sure you want a day or two to think about this, but I'm planning to go to Florida right after New Year's, so uh, would you make your mind up quickly, please? Uh, I arrived in the Chancery three days later, and as I hit the front door and started down the hall toward his office, he stuck his head out and he said, I hope you got good news for me. Uh, he did have to delay his trip to Florida by two days, but we, we got it done rather quickly. Surprised? Absolutely. Monsignor Thomas Costello was ordained as Auxiliary Bishop in 1978. Throughout his 50 years of service, Bishop Costello has always spoken up when he sees injustice. He held a prayer vigil outside the federal building during the trial of the Plowshare Seven. He has spoken out against pornography, spoken up for equal rights for women, spoken out against abortion and the death penalty. In fact, he hosted a TV show for four years. One of his guests was the author of Dead Man Walking. Another was peace activist, Father Philip Berrigan. He held prayer services to bring attention to unsafe working conditions and worked to avert strikes. At times, his actions created controversy, but he always acted according to his conscience. As a member of the National Conference of Catholic Bishops, Bishop Costello chaired its Communications Committee for three years. During that time, his face was frequently seen on national TV, including an appearance on the McNeil Lair Report. He has been an auxiliary bishop to three bishops, first Bishop Harrison, then Bishop O'Keefe, and now Bishop Moynihan. Summing up his experience for a Catholic Sun profile some time ago, he said, for years now, I've tried to make the effort to be present to be available, to facilitate, to ameliorate, as one who serves. I must say, I've enjoyed the ups and have survived the downs. Bishop Costello is a friend to so many and has had a great impact on their lives. Here's what some friends said who have known him for years. So often I have said to people, I feel so fortunate to be working for Bishop Costello, witnessing him in action as he serves all people with care, 
with compassion, with kindness, with a great sense of humor. He truly is one who serves. He is a gift to the Diocese of Syracuse. A gentleman and a man of uh, class, great speaker, Monsignor Watley, really influenced his life as becoming an orator. I think he sort of imitated his style with his own gifts. Bright person, a uh, man of great compassion for the poor, and obviously a person who is concerned about changing structures so that uh, the poor might have a better chance in life. Friend for 50 years, plus. I've been blessed with a 30-year friendship with Bishop Castell. In my early years here at the Chancery, he dubbed me with the nickname Downtown Mary. Due to my lunch hour shopping prowess, I think, I hope. And in my later years here, he's given me my most cherished title. Every morning he says, good morning, Rachel's grandma. During my husband's illness, he became the shoulder that I leaned on and really my rock. He just seemed to know those days when I really needed a hug. I'll be eternally grateful for that. I hope to share many more years of friendship with him. I love him. And in Tom's life, everything seems to come out good, although when we look at it, it looks like he bucked the tide, but I'm for anybody who bucks the tide. We asked Bishop Costello to tell us some of the highlights of his 50 years. Here's what he had to say. First Mass was clearly a, a high. Uh, after the shock, I guess Episcopal appointment was a, was a high. Uh, but there have been hundreds, thousands of good days. Uh, any day you can go to the altar. Good day. Hey, thanks for coming. You've come from far and from near. Thanks to my family for being here from Maryland. And I'll still see you around the diocese. Thank you, Bishop Costello, for 50 years as one who serves. <laughs>